Hello, welcome. I'm John. I'm a psychotherapist. We ask the internet for some questions, questions about mental and emotional health and well-being. Let me get on straight away and have a look at the first question we've ever been asked. Ah, my favourite subject, <laughs> sleep. I go to sleep easily, but I wake up every morning feeling exhausted and I can't seem to get out of this loop. What can I do? Thanks. It's actually a really important question with wider implications than you might think, because if you are waking up exhausted, it's not just about sleep. It's about the quality of your sleep. Um, here's, here's an interesting thing for you. It's often been said for years, interestingly, by pharmaceutical companies that depression is caused by a chemical imbalance in your brain. There's actually no evidence anywhere to support that idea. It's now known that depression is caused by having too much and too intense REM sleep. You see, very roughly, if we divide sleep into two types of sleep, there's, there's slow wave sleep, and slow wave sleep you should be in very roughly 80% of your night, and it looks after the hardware, it looks after you, your body. It's when you restore your cells, it's when you rest. Your body temperature drop, drops, your heart rate drops, all sorts of things that happen which are just to do with rest. Importantly, at the moment, what it does is it helps. It's a time when your immune system is strengthening and building, something that's important for all of us right now. But the other bit of sleep that we have is what's called REM sleep, R-E-M sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. And in rapid eye movement sleep, you are really busy You're using lots of energy. And rapid eye movement sleep is when we do the very vast majority of our dreaming. And here's the good news. These days we have a much deeper understanding of, of what dreams are for. And, and in, in simple terms, dreams are there to get rid of emotional arousal. All human beings get emotionally aroused, don't we? Sometimes negative things, um, sometimes positive things. Let's, let's look at the negative things. What we, we might get angry or frustrated or upset or enraged about something. That might be something that's really happened to us, but it also might be something that's just happening in your head. So you can sit in a chair and worry yourself into the most ridiculous emotional arousal when actually you're quite safe sat in a chair. Important to realise that your brain doesn't understand the difference between those two types of arousal. Now sometimes we can get rid of emotional arousal, can't we? Somebody, somebody has a go at us, Quite unjustly. What do we do? Huh. We have a go back if we feel like it. Uh, we, we fill ourselves with righteous indignation at that moment and we just tell them, well, I'm sorry, you've had a go at the wrong person and it wasn't me. Huh. We do not need to dream about it. It's when we don't, it's when we can't get rid of it that's the, that there's a problem. And, and, and if you, you, you think of yourself building up all day and sometimes are quite intense emotional arousal, and you need to get rid of it. You've got to get rid of it. Every human being that gets aroused has to get de-aroused. And the way you do that is in your sleep. At, at, as you're going off to sleep, your brain is looking around for patterns. It's looking around for things that have happened to you. It might be, it might be something that happened just before you went to sleep, mixed up with something that happened 10 years ago, that something you saw in a movie recently, read in a book, whatever. And it's quite interesting, it conjures it together into this thing called a dream. Every, people say to me, I had this weird dream last night. All dreams are weird, of course they are. The purpose of dreams is to help you to feel emotions. Emotions that then help you to complete that cycle of getting aroused and de-aroused. And that, that, that happens in the night and that's a normal state of affairs. As I said, 80% of your night in, in, in rest sleep and about 20% of your night in, in, in dream sleep. That varies. It's, it it's de depends on, on, on diet, it depends on age, it depends on life experience and temperament. So we're talking very rough generalizations here. That's fine. You, you go in these, again, roughly 90 minute cycles. Um, the, the first half of your night is, is mainly rest sleep. The second half of your night, you're in and out of ever longer periods of REM sleep. 
and you wake up the next morning, you've had your, your rest and you've had your emotional scales rebalanced. That's terrific. That's the way it's meant to be. However, if in some way your, your basic fundamental emotional needs are not being met and you are highly emotionally aroused, and, and that's happening on any kind of regular basis, then it's quite likely that you're going to need more and more and more REM sleep. Now, Joe Griffin, who, who came up with this idea 20, 25 years ago now about, about um, REM sleep and, and, and dream sleep, his, his, his idea is called the expectation fulfillment theory of dreaming. It really knocked all the other theories about dreaming out of the ballpark, all those strange old Freudian ideas and, and, and odd things like that that have been around for a long time. So where it goes wrong is this. Perhaps you are getting very regularly, intensely aroused about something, but perhaps you're just a worrier. Perhaps you're ruminating over something that happened in the past, some great injustice that was done a long time ago. Perhaps you are just constantly worried on a daily basis about, about what's happening around you, about all the uncertainty that there is in your world. And, and, and what that does is it fills up your, your, think of it as a system, it fills it up much, much more quickly. It becomes, it becomes more like a pressure cooker, I guess. You go off to sleep and now there's not enough time for you in the night to get that slow wave rest sleep that you need to rebuild yourself. You're having more and more REM sleep. REM sleep is exhausting. You're having intense REM sleep and the alarm goes off and you wake up exhausted. And that is the hallmark of a depressed person. So that night you go to sleep again, having had a day where you've struggled and you're emotionally aroused. And so you need more dream sleep. And that's how the spiral starts. There's really useful ways out of it. Um, the bottom of my list of those is to take antidepressants. Now, I'm not anti-antidepressants. What I am in favour of is people taking informed decisions. And this notion that, that depression is caused by some chemical imbalance in your brain is, is just, there's no evidence to support that whatsoever. There may well be a chemical imbalance, but that is much more likely to be a symptom rather than a cause. So what do we do about it? There's a lot, a lot of reading material around about this stuff. If you, if you search for expectation fulfillment theory of dreaming, if, you'll find an awful lot of information there. And if you go to whywedream.com, but it's, there's a hyphen between each of those words, why-we-dream.com, you'll find out a lot more information about it there. Get in touch, message me, email me, put stuff in the, the comments below, and I will look forward to, to um, sending you lots and lots more information which give you, will give you practical ideas about how you can dig yourself out of this cycle of, of um, waking up feeling exhausted. Please do subscribe and like. We'd love to let you know. If, if you hit that little bell as well, we'll send you an automatic notification of when we're gonna answer somebody else's questions. One last really important thing. Take care of each other and take care of yourself. Thank you.